Friday in the stock market, we started to pull back, but is it all just going to be a bear trap? First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. So Friday in SPY, we were down half a percent. And on Thursday, I told you if you went over to the hourly chart on SPY, there was this double top rejection from SPY 437. And we did get confirmation of the break below the neckline, which told us we were likely going down to SPY 430. And on Friday, that is exactly what we did. So if you don't believe technical analysis works, this is a textbook technical pattern. When you get a double top and break below the neckline, you go the full measured move. And that was picture perfect double topping price action on the SPY hourly chart, which means that short trade, which was a low risk short entry, which I talked about on Thursday, is now complete. And there is a very good chance if you think SPY is going too much lower that you will get bear trapped here. So first thing, if we just look at the daily chart, it looks like that we were selling off on very high volume, but I will talk about volume in detail, especially when we look at the Dow Jones today. So if you want to get more information on the volume, make sure you pay attention to all of the indices because there's going to be a lot of important technical analysis across the board that if you get it wrong, you are going to completely misread exactly what's going on in the price action. So first of all, if you just look at the daily chart, it looks like a very bearish candle on high volume. But if you look at the hourly chart, it was a textbook double top pullback from a double top price target that reached the price target on Friday. And then once we reached the price target, we started to see very high volume buying. And we also had very high volume buying in the beginning of the morning. So there was a lot of volume actually pushing prices higher. And then during the pullback, we were getting very low volume on the pullback, which tells us that the buyers are more motivated than the sellers. And if you simply just look at the daily chart and the daily volume and the daily candle, you do not get that full picture that there was a hell of a lot of buyers on Friday. So we've been talking about needing a pullback and we've been talking about needing a higher low. And now that is exactly what we are getting. As long as we can hold this support right around SPY 430 and then start to bounce out of this hole, I think there's a very good chance SPY is going to 440. And then if we can break through the 440s, we're likely going all the way up here through the gap fills at 448 and 455. So bigger picture, I still think quarter four is going to be a bull rally. But as I've said before, nothing moves in a straight line, which means we will need higher lows before we get those higher highs along the way. So watch price action very closely going into next week. And on Monday, if SPY breaks below 430, then you can get a lot more risk off. But above 430, I think you need to be very optimistic of what I just talked about of this being a higher low before we continue higher. If you think we are going lower and you think SPY is going down into the low 400s, that is okay. That is the bearish scenario. But I would highly suggest you wait until price action breaks support before you favor that scenario. Because if price action breaks below 430, price action will be below all these moving averages we will have the bear trend and this will look like we are going to continue lower however the bear trap part of that is if you assume that and you don't wait to see if spy breaks below 430 and we get a very very impulsive bounce that is where the bear trap is going to come in and that is where you're going to get trapped in your short positions if you don't manage risk on the breakout above spy 437. So SPY 437 is critical resistance next week and SPY 430 is critical support. And when you get a market this simple to trade, you want to be damn sure you don't mess it up. If we break SPY 430, you risk off. And if we break SPY 437, you risk on. You can trade the range while we're in it. And there's always the chance we stay in this range and kind of build out a triangle before the breakout. So it is okay to day trade that range, but once we break through that range, we are likely going to continue a trend and that's going to be a lot more favorable for you swing traders. So you can swing short below 430 and swing long above 437 and you can try to catch the falling knife at the risk level right here at SPY 430. But do keep in mind, you will need to manage a risk if we start to break below that support, just like you bear shorting will need to manage risk if we start to break above that resistance. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were down 1.26% on Friday and just like like spy we had the continuation of the pullback which is exactly what we're looking for and as long as the bulls can hold a higher low here and stay above this 20 daily moving average and then start to bounce and break out of this downtrending trend line there's a very good chance this was all just a pullback and a correction within a bull market and we are continuing higher so for that reason, it is very critical support on the triple Qs between 360 and 362. That is the critical support the bulls will need to hold because if they do not hold that support, there's a very good chance we're coming down to 347. So that's your line in the sand for you bulls to manage your risk from. And if you're shorting as a bear, simply manage your risk below this resistance trend line because this is still a downtrend until it's not. 
meaning you can comfortably short below these levels in the 370s, knowing that if we break above it, you need to take your loss and get out of that short position. As you can see, the triple Qs have been the leader all year long, and that has not changed. And we still have a very bullish configuration in the moving averages as long as we get that higher low into the higher high breakout we should regain the bull trend and start back into that quarter four rally. On the Dow Jones, we were up 0.12% on Friday, and the Dow Jones looks like it has extremely high volume on a red day, which means high volume selling. But you can see we actually closed up 0.12%. And if you go to the hourly chart, you can see very clearly at the open, we had extremely high volume buying. And that is why the Dow Jones is not bearish just because it looks like it had high volume selling. You can clearly see from the hourly chart, there was a lot of high volume buying. So just like I have drawn on the daily chart, we are still looking for a higher low into a higher high, and we still have a gap to fill all the way up there at 344, which is also going to give us a very nice retest of this downtrending trend line, which does define the current downtrend of lower highs and lower lows. So do not be surprised if the Dow Jones holds this support at 336 and pushes towards 341 and then the gap fill at 344. Manage your risk right around this retest of the low between 334 and 336, because if we can't hold that support, there's a good chance we are going back down towards 331. On the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we were down 0.83% on Friday, and the small caps are now in a very critical support because if they do not bounce from 170 and they break down to a lower low, that is likely going to send us down for this next leg lower at 164. Now, as you can tell from my arrow, I think we are going to double bottom from 170, and I think it's going to be very quickly that we bounce from this hole and break this resistance at 176 and then go fill that gap right around 180. This will also be a very nice test of the downtrending resistance trend line, so I think there's a very good chance this is a bear trap if you're expecting it to break as support. You need to wait for price action to confirm it before you short down to 164. If you short at support and we get a very impulsive bounce, that's going to be a very large unnecessary loss. So do keep that in mind. The small caps are at a very critical test. And if we break down from here, it is going to be a straight flush down to 164. But don't assume it's going to happen. Wait for the confirmation of that break of the previous low. On the RK ETF, we were down 1.85% on Friday. And I still think RK is going down to fill this gap at 36 and you can see price action did close below the previous low right around 38. So we do have the official lower high into the lower low and the Bollinger Bands are squeezing, but I do think there's a good chance we will close that gap below. For that reason, do not get bullish in the RK ETF until we start to see higher highs and higher lows because this is still a very powerful downtrend. On the VIX, we were up 15.63% on Friday and the VIX tried to break above 20 yet again. And once again, the VIX crushed down below that level and closed down below 20. And if I zoom out, that is the same behavior we had had all year long. So in a bull market, the VIX can spike up to 20, but we don't expect it to close above 20. So if the VIX does break above 20 and start closing above 20, then we can start to assume we're going to get a more bearish market. On Bitcoin, we're currently trading just under 27,000, which was the break of that support. So on Bitcoin, it's still risk off below 27,000 for a very high probability it's coming back down to 25,000. If we can bounce and continue to form higher lows and higher highs and break that resistance at 28,000, then it's very likely the bottom is in and the bottom was down here at 25,000. But if we can't hold 25,000, look for a straight flush down to 22,000. On Tesla stock, we were down nearly 3% on Friday and Tesla broke down through that critical support at 255 and we do have earnings coming up around the corner. And one important thing to notice on Tesla is that we have this huge wedge where we are just wedging into a point where a decision is going to be made of whether Tesla is going to break out higher or lower. So going into earnings next week and with this very tight consolidation wedge, anything is possible, which means we could either get a very large move to the upside or a very large move to the downside. And it's very difficult to guess which one it's going to be with, with a very coin flip event like earnings. So I don't suggest taking too much risk on in Tesla. And it's now currently a little more risk off for you bulls now that it's below 255 because below 255, there's a good chance we're coming down to the 240s. And then below that, we can go to 230 and a gap fill just below 218. So if earnings aren't going to go great, we could easily go down and fill that gap before we continue higher. And if we go fill that gap, I do think you could probably try to catch that falling knife around this critical support zone just below 215. And then from there, there's a good chance the bulls would take back control and start pushing higher towards 290. On Apple stock, we were down 1.03% on Friday and Apple is doing largely what we expected, which was to start to pull back from the resistance at 182. And we are looking for a higher low somewhere between 174 and 177 before we continue higher to close the gap above 190. This is the expectation that I have, but if we can't hold this support, then there's always the possibility we continue lower and go fill that gap down there at 167. So know both scenarios as traders, you don't need the market to only move in one direction, 
but this is the preferred scenario that I have that I think Apple is just looking for a higher low before it continues higher. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, this is going to be a very simple trading week because on SPY, you have a very tight range between 430 and 437, and whichever direction we break out of that range is going to tell us the next leg in this market. Have a trade plan prepared for any scenario and then let the price action do all the talking and you are going to absolutely crush this market next week. If you want to come crush the market with us, consider joining the Stocks Channel Discord server or Bank Trade Alerts and you can find out how to join either of those services by clicking on the links below. So thank you for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market and as always, I will see you in the next episode.